let me start by asking you a question, and that's, can the Bills get to 6-6? Six and six? Sitting at 3-4 and four right now, can they get to 6-6? Six and six? Probably a lot without E.J. Manuel, but has Thad Lewis been terrible? No. But we'll get into that. I just want to ask you, can the Bills get to 6-6? Six and six? Like I said, 3-4 and four right now, staring at a tough stretch of games. They've played some good teams already. They have a tough stretch coming up. In at New Orleans, Kansas City at home, at Pittsburgh, home against the Jets, bye week, and then the Falcons in Toronto. Can they win three of those games? Because if they get to six and six, then they're staring down four games. They have four games left. Three of them are on the road. But it's Tampa Bay, Jacksonville, at home against Miami in December, and then at New England to finish the season. But if they can get to 6-6, six and six, they set themselves up in a pretty good spot to at least get to 9-7, and seven, right? I, to make you optimistic. I know that's tough. Look at this muddled middle for the second wildcard spot. You're looking at San Diego at four and three. The Jets are four and three. Miami's three and three. The Bills are three and four. I believe what are the Ravens? I believe are three and four. Steelers are two and four. The Raiders are two and four. I believe the Chargers are four and three. I mean, it's all there. They're only a game out of that. It's all right there for the taking. But, I mean, they're all fighting for one spot, so it's going to be tough. And, yes, we assume they're all fighting for one spot because Denver and Kansas City, the other team, should have that wild card essentially locked up. But can they get to 6-6? Six and six? Discuss. Last week they played the Dolphins. Picked them to lose, and they won. So I might continue that trend. It was pretty to start off because they had the pick six by Roby, perfect, perfectly executed by Roby, which is good because he's he's been doing that a lot, trying to time jumps and stuff like that and just missing. I've noticed him do that multiple times throughout the season, and he finally got one, and he took it back for six. So, I mean, when you're getting a defensive touchdown, that's huge. Especially so early in the game. So the Bills get up 7 nothing. They get the ball back a little bit later. And Jackson drives it in for the touchdown. And it's 14 nothing Bills. And I don't care. you, you got to win that game. <laughs> You're up 14 nothing on the road against a divisional opponent. you got to win that game. They did win that game. But they let it get away from them, didn't they? Fred Jackson, who I already touched on, what a warrior. There's room for that guy on any team in the NFL. I don't care how many running backs you have, who your running back is. The guy is an animal. From thinking he suffered a season-ending injury to coming back to the field and icing the game almost because on that third and four where it looked like he didn't really have a lot of room and he wiggled his way through and got the first down, the Bills were able to take another two minutes off the clock before kicking the field goal. That, oh, my goodness. There's there's nothing more you can say about a play like that. That's a play that isn't really in the highlights, but it was really one of the turning points of the game outside of the fumble by Tannehill, forced by Mario Williams, who... You didn't notice early on, but trust me, he was effective. He was getting to Tannehill. He was disrupting. He was making Jonathan Martin look stupid. And he really did. I believe it was Jonathan Martin. On the first sack where he just kind of stood up, let the guy move out of the way, and just took Tannehill down, buried him into the ground. It was awesome. And the second one, of course, which I just touched on, was essentially the turning point of the game. Well, I don't know why the Dolphins are throwing there, but they did. Thank you. And Mario made up. That's the kind of play that we haven't really had a guy make. 
it was like late in the game. You know what I mean? It was the kind of play that brings your team back from almost certain defeat, like grabbing victory from the jaws of defeat. That's sort of what he did. Because it's looking like, oh, what, I, like how, how much time are the Bills going to get the ball back with? Are they going to all field goal? Are they going to need a touchdown? How many timeouts are they going to have left? Uh, and then he just he just makes a play. So kudos to Mario. Thank you. You're healthy. I, I believe in you. I have believed in you the whole way. He already has 10 sacks. He's a monster. Quietly, no one is really criticizing that pick anymore, or that, not pick, the contract. $100 million man is tied for second in the league in sex. Should he be first? Probably. But Robert Mathis is doing his thing, and so is Justin Houston, so props to them. Thad Lewis, let's talk about the offense a little bit. Thad Lewis was not great, but he did lead them to 13 points. The turning point, I think, for him, I mean, I, he grew up there, so maybe he was a little bit nervous. But the turning point for him was the, the shot to the helmet that blew his, that knocked his helmet off, and he still completed the pass to Johnson. That was huge. The Bills only got a field goal off of that, but it looked like he was, he, he hadn't settled down because he was just so fired up after that play, but it looked like he was more in control that he gained some sort of confidence from that, and that was encouraging. The interception wasn't really his fault. He got hit. Ball flies up there. That that happens. Maybe he held on to the ball too long, which he does sometimes, and takes sacks because of it. But overall, I thought the Bills did a pretty good job um, with Lewis. Um, you know, you get a defensive touchdown, and you hope you win the game. Lewis puts up 16 points offensively, so... I don't hate it by any means on the road against a divisional opponent coming off a of bye week. It's the kind of performance that you can be kind of optimistic at least because they don't have the quarterback they want to be playing. Everyone else is, for the most part, healthy except Gilmore with the club, which might be coming off. Concerned a little bit about Lawson and his hamstring. I know it's probably day to day, but he might miss a week. Because of it, Spiller with the ankle. Spiller's clearly not healthy, but he can still run. He can still outrun people even with a bad ankle, which is impressive. But yeah, they need that to get right. But like I said, most for the most part, they're pretty healthy. They don't have anything really serious going on except EJ, which is the most important position on the field. But everyone else around them is picking up the slack. Stevie Johnson. Had an early drop, but came back and caught six passes for 60-plus yards. And he made some big catches along the way, so don't underestimate those. What else? Uh, I had a pretty good week, actually, or a pretty good Tuesday. I got to hang out with Stevie Johnson. I'll throw some of the pictures up here for you guys. Thanks to Northtown Auto, and I, I won a Twitter contest and was able to tour the stadium with Stevie. As you know, I work there, so it was sort of a tour of my workplace, but you know what, it was fun, I went some places that I haven't gone before, uh, Stevie Johnson obviously was there, we ran into EJ Manuel, and here's the picture of that, so that was pretty sweet, oh, if you want a health update, I couldn't tell, he had long pants on, uh, it looked like there was something on his leg, because it was coming out of the bottom of his pants, I'm, I'm trying to help you out, but, I mean, he's walking, doesn't look like a guy who's going to be playing, but it looked like he was there and doing some sort of work. So, not working out. He was in one, maybe like one of the, the rec rooms or something, but nonetheless, he was he looked like he was busy. And he is a stand-up guy, a class act, incredibly nice, willing to talk to you, take pictures, whatever. I like him a lot, a lot. Anyway, this week we got the Saints. Game I pretty much pegged as a loss from day one on the schedule at New Orleans. And I don't feel that good about it still. 
it's the, the, the Saints, it's loud in the Superdome. They're at home, they're on their turf. They're going to be wearing their all black uniforms, probably, <laughs> which somehow makes them more intimidating. And I, everything they do pretty much works, except run the football, but they don't need to because they have Drew Brees, who gets into r rhythms that are just out of this world sometimes. Their defense is much improved with Rob Ryan. They have big contributors like uh, Vaccaro, who's even a rookie who's being overlooked, Malcolm Jenkins, Jabari Greer, you might remember him. Um, I mean, they're coming off that tough loss to New England, but they had a week in between to prepare for the Bills. And I don't know how much you can speak to knowing each other as coaches, but Marone did work under Peyton, so maybe he can help with some sort of tendencies that Peyton likes to do or that Breeze likes to do because they've been there together. But likewise, Peyton might be able to do the same about Moreau. How do you beat the Saints? It's, I mean, I know that the Patriots did it kind of undermanned because their defense was, I mean, they still had Mayo. Tlaib left with an injury, but they held Graham down. We don't know if Graham's healthy and how that will play into their game plan if he plays. But they still do a good job of getting open. Like guys like Colston and Kenny Stills has been good. Pierre Thomas out of the backfield and Sproles out of the backfield. You always have to be wary about. And the Bills have been beaten by that at times this year. Giovanni Bernard, to name one. The Bills tend to give up a lot to wide receivers. That's why I'm worried about guys like Colston. And they've been better against the tight end, but Jimmy Graham is pretty much a receiver if he plays, and he's a hell of a talent. So, I like Tampa Bay held him down pretty well. Like I said, the Patriots did a undermanned almost, because I, I think we would agree the Patriots' defense is all right. I, I don't think it's as talented. It might be better coached. I don't know, but it might be. I don't think it's as talented as the Bills is. So... There's, I'm sure there's ways to exploit them. I don't really know what they are. You have to get to him, first of all. You have to get in his face. Mario needs a big day. Marcel Darius, Kyle Williams, they need big days. That's why I would like to have Manny Lawson because, uh, first of all, he can sort of cover the tight end. Graham is faster than him, but Manny Lawson is big and might be able to make some plays there because Cersei is not big. And, I don't know, Aaron Williams might go back to safety if Gilmore has free hands. We'll see how that works out. Williams against Graham might be a better matchup, but, I mean, Jimmy Graham's still going to get his, probably. It's just they're, just they're so much more intimidating at home than they are on the road. I think that the Saints can be beaten on the road. I think it's very difficult to beat them in the Superdome. Very, very, very difficult. Kind of like the Seahawks in their... Um, and their, their 12th man thing going on. It's um, it's going to be a challenge. <laughs> Offensively, you want to say, oh, the Bills just have to control the ball, keep Breeze off the field. That's easier said than done. The Saints, like I said, are better defensively than they have been in years past. Last year, they were the worst ever, I believe. They gave up the most yards of all time in one season. They're much improved there. I'm This is crazy, but I'm a little concerned about the Rex Ryan to Rob Ryan communication. I know they talk. And I remember last time it happened, Rob Ryan was the DC of the Cowboys, and the Bills lost 44-7. to That was terrible. So I'm concerned about that. I, I'm sure Rex, who has a pretty, does a pretty good job coaching against the Bills, has talked to Rob about it. Because obviously Rob, well, obviously they want to win, Obviously, Rex, at 4-3, and three, doesn't want the Bills to come back up to 4-4. Four and four. Obviously, he wants to create some separation. He doesn't want the Bills to win. So, we'll see what kind of schemes they throw at Thad Lewis. Like, you could bring up the point that E.J. Manuel was the quarterback for... The Jets game and Thad Lewis is the quarterback now, but 
I don't know if that's really here or there. I know they play a little bit differently, but all in all, I still think they can come up with an effective game plan. I don't think the Bills... I'm not going to say they don't stand a chance because something could go their way, ball bounces this way, bang, you know, touchdown or something, I, hopefully. But I'm not optimistic about them winning. I think they're going to lose, like, I hope they score 20 points. 34 to 20. Saints, 34 to 20 because I need the Bills to keep scoring 20 points a game. That's just cool. Anyway, guys, I want to thank you, all of you. You can get at me on Twitter, same as my YouTube handle. And, you know, if you come in 16 minutes in these videos, I just appreciate all you guys because you obviously love the Bills, you like hearing my voice, all that stuff. It's the Saints on Sunday, and I'll talk to you guys next week, all right? As always, go Bills.